Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about a few very important points that will enable you to kind of put together in your mind a strategy for working with your doctor here and with me if you choose to see me for some counseling sessions to work as a team to treat and manage your chronic pain. Now, the important thing to understand about chronic pain is that there's no quick and easy fix. And everyone that suffers from chronic pain has to find their way to control their pain. But while there's unique differences between how each person has to deal with their pain, there are certain things that are the same across the board for everyone that comes to our pain center to get treatment to help them to live with less pain. And the first thing that cuts across and it applies to everyone is the importance of understanding that treatment with narcotic pain medication or opiates is just one piece of the puzzle. It's not everything. And for, not, for, for many people, it's not a treatment of choice. Now, when you're prescribed narcotic or opiate pain medication, you're being prescribed that medication by our doctor here with the idea that the medication is going to help to make it easier for you to cope day to day with the burden of having the physical pain that you have persist and that interferes with everything that you do, including your sleep. It obviously affects your mood, it makes you angry, it makes you depressed, it makes you anxious, it agitates you, it makes it hard to sleep, it makes it hard to sit still, it makes it hard to concentrate. And the pain medicine on its own is only designed to kind of buffer you from the pain, but it can only do that not in a hundred percent fashion, but to some degree. It, it, it may give you 50% relief, it may give you 80% relief, which is often not the case, or it may give you 15% relief, or even something as low as 10% relief. But one of the questions to ask yourself is 10% better than nothing. The second thing to consider is that opiate pain medication is a legally controlled substance that is scheduled in a particular class depending upon how dangerous the particular drug is and how much potential there is for its being abused. So if, if an opiate is scheduled, that means that it's dangerous, it's risky, there are side effects, it can kill if used by the wrong person and if used in too high of a quantity or even if mixed with other medicines that it shouldn't be mixed with or alcohol or recreational drugs such as marijuana or cocaine or anything of that nature, sleeping pills. It's therefore of paramount importance that a responsible prescribing physician have measures in place to make sure that anyone that that doctor has entrusted to take pain medication under his watch follows the rules for their own benefit so that they don't end up in a coma or dead due to respiratory arrest or something like that. And of course, at the same time, naturally, the doctor has to also protect his or her own practice and license by practicing in a ethical manner following the best standards of practice that exist today. With that said, any time a physician suspects that any patient, no matter who it is, is not taking the opiate painkillers exactly as he or she is prescribing them for you, being the patient, 
it requires that doctor to investigate. And often what happens is patients become understandably indignant and annoyed or enraged at being questioned. In many cases, they're doing the right thing. In some cases, they're making mistakes and need to be corrected. In other instances, they're actually doing things underhandedly and are misusing the medications willfully. When that proves to be the case, they're discharged from our opiate medication program. When they're found to have just made honest mistakes, then they are asked to see me and we talk about it as we're doing now and we help the person who has good intentions correct their mistakes so that they won't make it again and jeopardize themselves and so they can get the most benefit from the medication. Now, the thing about opiate medicine or painkillers, which is really not an accurate term, they don't kill pain. What they do is they just dull your brain's response to the pain signals. The truth about opiates is that if you take too much, they dull your brain too much and then, you know, you're dulled to everything else, which is not a good thing. And if you take too much, they can also depress your breathing and all that other stuff and cause death or, you know, brain damage. We don't want that to happen. That's why the best practice of pain management has to include other treatment modes along with the prescription of narcotics. Now, in your case, you have pain in different parts of your body due to wear and tear, due to injuries, and due to arthritis. And there's also a significant degree of disruption in your life that has resulted from your having the cumulative effects of that wear and tear and having to live with the persistent pain that you've lived with and you've lost work and your life has been disrupted and it's not the way you knew it before you had this persistent pain. Therefore, in order to get the most out of the opiate pain medication, it is also important that you do some other things in order to help you to get on the wagon to recovery from being a chronic pain invalid. Now you're already doing some very good things as you've told me earlier such as going to the gym, doing some exercises, and working on reconditioning yourself physically. That's very important because allowing your body parts to avoid any kind of movement or any kind of exercise as a result of being afraid of having more pain actually backfires and causes you to get deconditioned. And the old saying, you get fat and lazy, the fact is, is that you can become fat and crazy because the pain basically thrives on inactivity. And if you move, you win. If you stop moving, you lose, okay? And coping with chronic pain in certain respects is similar to the old saying that a shark got to keep moving forward or it dies. And with chronic pain, you got to continue to move forward or else your chronic pain can take over your life. And that's the last thing that you wanted to do. So what we want to do for you is we want to make sure that you have everything that we can offer you with your cooperation with our program to enable you to get an appropriate amount of opiate pain medicine to basically give your brain the help it needs to ignore some of those pain signals that you don't need to be so well attuned to so that you feel less pain. And at the same time, get your mind in line with doing some very good things that will help you to become more functional. Exercise is one of them. The second thing that I as a 
clinical pain psychologists offer and believe that you could very much benefit from is learning one or two methods of relaxing your mind and your body so that you can use those methods on a regular basis for 10 minutes, let's say twice a day when you're at home, and also on the fly when you're out and about, so that if you get pain, you can reduce the strain by doing something quick that's similar to, but a rapid way of bringing about the same type of relief that you'll get from doing these exercises that I want to teach you on your own when you're at home and you don't have to be bothered and you don't have to worry about driving or distractions. Okay. Now, the purpose of relaxation is threefold. Number one, when you're relaxed, you can't be tense and tension makes pain worse. Number two, when your body and your mind are relaxed, it's almost impossible to be feeling a lot of pain, okay? And number three, and this may be the most important of the three, and that is by learning how to relax properly, you can learn how to be more in control of what you pay attention to. Now, there's a term that's going around lately in the world of healthcare, and there's programs offered for this particular thing I'm going to mention in a whole lot of places like University of Pennsylvania and places with big names. And what it's called is mindfulness-based stress reduction, or MBSR. And what that highfalutin term basically refers to is learning how to be mindful of what it is that you're doing when you're doing it and learning a few exercises to sharpen your mind so that you're able to stay present in the present when you're in the present rather than worrying about the future or rehashing and obsessing about mistakes you've made in the past. Mindfulness-based stress reduction is a component of a total pain reduction or pain management program. And it incorporates learning how to relax your mind and your body, learning how to control your attention, and learning how to turn off worrisome, depressing, and negative thoughts. By coming to me for three or four visits, I can teach you mindfulness-based stress reduction. I can teach you a few methods of relaxation to use at home and on the fly. And I can also teach you how to improve your frustration tolerance so that you're less apt to feel like you have no other option than to take more pain medicine when you feel a flare-up of pain. That's basically what I wanted to share with you and I also just want to simply conclude by telling you that if you watch this videotape several times, you'll learn something new each time you listen to it and watch it. You'll remember more points and you'll definitely imprint into your mind, which is very important, the idea that you can learn how to gain control over your pain and therefore live with less pain. And at the same time, make sure that you remain a patient here at our pain center, receive your medicine, and work together with your doctor as a team. Because if you can't be a team with your doctor, then you can't be a patient of that doctor. Okay? All right.